Hello everybody, Lucas Rubuki here with another AngularJS screencast. Today we are going to talk about integrating AngularJS with the Chosen plugin. Now, the Chosen plugin is one of my new favorite jQuery plugins that I had the opportunity of using uh, about a week ago on a project. I needed to create a form that would basically allow you to choose multiple recipients and send it out. And so let's jump over to their GitHub page. Uh, Chosen is a plugin written by a group called Harvest and I think they've just done a phenomenal job. And what it does is it takes your regular select box and it gives it superpowers. So you can see here that I'm allowed to actually select multiple items from this drop-down list and uh, it looks very much like sending multiple recipients in you know any standard email program and so what it's doing is it's taking your standard multi-select and through magic it is turning it into this which is exactly what I needed at the time and so I really dig this plugin but there were just a few things that I ran into when hooking this into Angular, and I just wanted to share those with you today. So one is, you would see what an awesome plugin this is, but at the same time is you could integrate it into your Angular app with virtually no pain at all. So let's get started. What I have here is your default uh, kind of chosen setup with just a select, and then I've hard-coded some options into here, and then I'm calling on document ready, uh, chosen select, which is basically just pointed to this, and I'm instantiating the plugin with uh, this chosen call right here. And so, pretty easy. Uh, already you have something super functional, but with AngularJS, we can make it even better. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete these DOM options that I've hard-coded in. I'm going to delete this script tag here. And so now what I have is a basic Angular application. I'm auto-bootstrapping it here and I'm looking for the MyApp module, which I have right here. Module equals angular.module myapp. So the first thing that I like to do when I create a new Angular application is to create a controller. So we are going to call this recipients controller. And let's go ahead and build this out. Function recipients controller. We're going to pass in scope and the HTTP service, which we're going to use in just a moment. And I'm going to create a URL property on scope that's just going to point to the JSON file that I have right over here and it's essentially an object literal markup of the DOM options that I previously had in the HTML. And let's create a place to store that. So we'll create scope recipients list equals and let's make that just an empty array. Now let's create a function to actually uh, grab these, grab this JSON and do something with it. So we will call this fetch recipients equals function. And now let's go ahead and call it. Now watch how easy this is. HTTP get, let's pass in the scope URL and I'm going to create a promise here which is, promises are really cool, that is an entire screencast unto itself, so I'm going to save that for another day, but just trust me when I say it's really cool. And then let's store this result here. So it's result.data and Let's actually call this function. So I'm going to refresh the page to make sure that I haven't thrown any errors. So far so good, but nothing is happening here, which is because I haven't done anything to the DOM yet. So 
Let's go over here. Let's create an ng model to actually store the values that I've selected. And then let's create ng options. This is essentially ng repeat, but it's specially created for select boxes. So let's go recipient name for recipient in recipients list. Let's refresh this again. Here it is. So essentially what you have is a standard multi-select select box with these options in it. Now let's give it chosen powers. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to create a directive called chosen and we're going to go over here and define this. Let's go module dot directive. Let's go chosen. Let's create the factory function here. I like to define the actual return object kind of right out of the gates because it kind of provides clarity as I'm building out the rest of it. So let's go restrict. And this could be anything, but I think an attribute is kind of best suited for this. So let's just go ahead and go with that. Let's create a link function and let's call it linker. I figure since control functions are called controllers, we will call this linker. So, and we're going to pass in scope element. That's the pretty standard uh, linker uh, function signature there. And then let's just go element chosen like so. Now notice that I haven't done anything with element, that I'm using it just completely as it's being injected. The reason why I don't need to do the dollar sign paren is because element has already been wrapped in jQuery, which is pretty handy. Um, so occasionally I'll see element, you know, wrapped in a jQuery and um, it's something that I've done myself, but it's unnecessary. So just a little shortcut there is, you know, no, no, no need to, to do that. Element has already been uh, wrapped in a jQuery object. It is a jQuery object. So let's go ahead and refresh this. And you start typing and nothing is happening. So this was the, the kind of the second major roadblock that I hit, if you could even call it major, is I'm like, I know the JSON's coming in because um, it was working before, but nothing is in here. Let's check the DOM. And so then I go to the DOM and I look and it's like, well, the options are here, but apparently chosen um, just doesn't know it exists yet. So I went back to the documents and I started reading through and I noticed that they had a section here about updating it dynamically. And they have this event called list updated that you can trigger on this element um, when something has happened and you kind of want it to rebuild itself. So with that knowledge in hand, I went back and I said, well, when would I want to update this? And the answer is, well, clearly when I set recipients list to this data. So let's go here and let's go scope. Let's use the watch function here. And we are going to watch recipients list and then we're going to from here execute this function and let's go element trigger ICT updated and so now when this changes the this list updated event is triggered and it will rebuild um, basically this chosen plugin. So let's go here, refresh it, and as you can see, it is working as expected. And so now I've kind of encapsulated all of this chosen functionality in this linker, which is the intended purpose of directives and the link function. It's pretty nice. And so let's just do one other thing, just real quick. Let's go P here, and going to go ng repeat and I'm going to go recipient in recipients and I just want to show you how to keep track of what you've actually selected which is why I created this ng model right over here so we will go 
recipient name. Okay, so let's refresh this one more time. And so you can see that as I select this, this model is being updated and it's bound to this repeater here. So pretty cool. Um, then when I delete it, then you can see that it updates as well. So that pretty much sums up uh, the screencast. Um, my hope for this is one is that you'll see how awesome the Chosen plugin is. Uh, thank you Harvest for putting it out. I think it's phenomenal. I love it. And that you'll see how awesome it is. You'll use it in one of your projects and you'll kind of take away some of the things that I've covered that you can get into your project even easier than it already is. Um, so I hope you've learned something. Have a great day and I hope to see you on the next screencast. Adios.